interesting. And Bert, when you're ready, please. Thank you. Right. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Bert, and uh, welcome everyone to our uh, Good uh, Friday service. Um, to those of us um, joining us for the first time, my name is Christian, one of the worship uh, leaders uh, in St. John's, and glad to have you joining us today uh, for Good Friday service. Um, just a bit of housekeeping to let everybody um, away. Um, our service is being recorded as is on the screen at the moment. So if you do not wish to have your pictures shown on the YouTube, please uh, switch off your camera now. Today um, is Good Friday um, and our services today has been shortened to one hour instead of three hour as a station, just because we felt uh, three hours on Zoom was quite a long time for everyone. So we managed to compress um, the service to just within an hour. So um, there is a bit of um, kind of moving on along the service as we will not avoid um, overrunning in some areas. Um, but at the same time, we're all pleased to uh, be here in the presence of God, uh, especially today at Good Friday, and to be worshiping at the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if I can invite you all to um, join at your homes on the words uh, and bold characters, while I read out the ones on the lighter arm fonts. And thanks to uh, James and uh, Tokes for helping us in the background. If I can invite uh, Tokes to now mute uh, everyone as we uh, make a start in our service.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacrifice uh, that our Lord Jesus Christ brings us at the cross. How deep the love that you have for us. How vast beyond all measure. As we come to join the saints at the cross of Calvary, we ask, O oh Lord, that our sacrifice of worship will be acceptable in your presence today and always. Amen. Amen. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him, stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes we are healed. And we say together to collect for the Good Friday. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we'll take a moment of silence just to steady ourselves as we come before our risen, our crucified Lord at the cross of Calvary. And our opening hymn will be hymn number 542. Over to you, Bed. Thank you. Indeed, there is no other able to pay the price for sin. 
for Christ alone could unlock the gates of heaven for us to come in. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 53, and that will be brought to us by Richard. Richard, unmute yourself and bring us the reading, please. Over to you. Thank you very much. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers it silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression, the judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer, and though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great and he will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Richard. And we take together the responses to our reading. We adore you, O Christ, and praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Now, let's take a moment of silence as we reflect on that um, reading that Richard brought to us.
our Lord was despised and rejected and made to bear the transgressions of our sins. Our next song is how deep the Father's love for us. And um, Levita has kindly recorded the song for us as we take those and listen to those songs. I want us to reflect on the words of the songs as uh, Levita brings it to us. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch's treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice called out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gift, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. It was my sin, our sin, your sin, that held him there until it was accomplished. And because it was accomplished today, we cannot boast in anything, no gift, no power, but on the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I've kindly asked a few of us within the congregation to bring us reflections of what our Bible readings during the Good Friday has meant to each and every one of them. It's quite nice to um, hear the perspectives of our readings and what um, understanding that um, the Holy Spirit is um, illuminating each and every one of our hearts with. 
Richard read for us Isaiah chapter 53. And Sister Vida has kindly agreed to give us a reflection on uh, that particular text. At the end of Sister Vida's um, reflection, we've got a couple of prayers and the silence that will follow. Sister Vida, unmute yourself, please, and bring us your reflection. Thank you. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, the text that we've just heard, Isaiah 53, from verses 4 and 5, we are familiar with where he says, with the stripes, we are healed. And healing is something that we are all um, aware of and in need of. And what I want to say about that is, in this world and in this life, you cannot have something that you don't have a word for. Anything that you want or need, you need to have a word for it. They will ask you, what is it? And you have to answer with a word. Then we know what it is. And the Lord in his merciful loving kindness, knowing that we will need healing, gives us this word here. And it says, with his stripes, we are healed. So that when we face times of sickness, infirmities, we know that the answer that we need there is healing. And we can come to this part of the scripture and in prayer, know what to ask for, which is healing. But I also want to bring your attention to from verses 10 and 11. It says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Where he says the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Sometimes we read the word and you know, we kind of read through it quickly and we don't pause to find the meaning there. It says the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. What is that pleasure? And whose hands will it prosper in? And we know from here that his hand is Jesus' hand. And his pleasure here, I take it to mean the propitiation for sin. And the answer for our sin, which is our salvation, that responsibility has been put in the hand of Christ. And he know that he is responsible and he will go through and make that offering. And we read where it says his soul, he poured out his soul unto death. Because this sin offering that we are talking about here, though Jesus died in his flesh, in his body died, we are talking about his soul also. And we human beings are also in three parts. We have our spirit, soul, and body. It is with our soul that we interact with one another. It is with our soul that we feel hurt. It is with our soul that we feel all kinds of emotion. And here, Jesus making a sacrifice with his soul for us so that when we are emotionally wounded, we can come here as well and find healing for our soul. And we read in Psalm 23, it says, he restored my soul because it's our soul that takes the battering of, you know, of the day's interaction with this world. And here also, he, he, he makes a sacrifice with his soul for us so that daily we can come and have our souls restored. And then from 12, it says, therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong 
because he has poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bared the sin of many, and made intercession for transgressors. Here we come into contact again with the word intercession. Intercession is what we need at the throne of God, because we are sinners. And why do we need this? Because God is holy. And you cannot go to God with sin. It is not impossible. He will not see sin. So we need Jesus to stand between the gap for us. And due to this sacrifice that Christ has made, that is why we are able to pray. We are able to say, Abba, Father. We are able to go before him with all our needs and requests because he stands in the gap for us. He is holy for us. And we depend on and rely on his holiness to come before the throne of grace. So that when we face situations, we don't now remember our sins and feel disqualified to come to God. And I also want to bring your attention to where it says, it is with his knowledge that many are saved. With his knowledge. What does it mean when he says with his knowledge? It's the knowledge of Christ. But how do you get to know him? It's by reading the word because the word is himself. The word of God is God. That sometimes treats people and they don't understand when they say the word was with God and the word was God. You see, if we bring it home, I'm only speaking because I'm alive and I'm able to speak my words. And if I speak words that I don't follow, you call me a liar because my, I don't follow what I say. I don't speak the truth. Then that means makes you a liar. So your word is also you and God's word is himself. And so he has put his word in him. And when you read his word, you become familiar with him. Just as when you learn mathematics, you get to know mathematics and you can solve equations. When you read his word, you get to know him and what he stands for, what his attributes are, what he loves, what he hates, and his wisdom. And with that knowledge, you are able to answer situations when they come with the word because you have acquainted yourself with him. I think it's in Job. It says, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. When you acquaint yourself with him, when you get to know him, then when situations come, you will remember where he says, where two agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be given to them. And you will be united with your friend, your brother, your sister in faith and come to him for an answer and it will be answered. So this is a great promise that God has given to us. And it is coincident that we read this word today because in the Torah, after Passover, they are commanded to count the Omer. And today being the sixth day of the Omer, the word that is reflected upon is the word humility. Humility in loving kindness. In Hebrew, they say, Hod Shebe Yesed. He said, Hod Shebe Yesed. Humility in loving kindness. God, Jesus he humbled himself at the cross and died for us and poured out his soul for us so that we will receive this promise. So, my prayer to all of us is that we will reflect on this scripture in our own time and be acquainted with him with his healing promise, with him interceding for us. And because of that, we are able to go boldly to the throne of grace at any time without appointment to receive grace and help in time of our need. Amen. 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 Thank you, Vida. 
And now let's take that uh, prayer for uh, while we reflect on the words that uh, Vida has brought us. Let us pray for all those who suffer, for those who are deprived and oppressed, for all who are sick, for those in darkness, in doubt and despair, in loneliness and in fear, for prisoners, captives and refugees, for the victims of false accusations and violence, for all at the point of death and those who watch beside them, that God in his mercy will sustain them with the knowledge of his love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And our next hymn is O Sacred Head That Was Once Wounded. So what's your bet? Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Now, next reading is John, John 18 um, from verses 28 to 40. And Julie will bring us the reading. Julie, please unmute yourself. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning and to avoid 
ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out of out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own mm. law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you king of the Jews? Is that your, your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is, what is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were my servants, if it were my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth, listen to me. What is truth? Retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against you. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back. No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And responding to that reading, we said together, we adore you, O Christ, and praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Our next is hymn, hymn number 523. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you for loving me. Over to you, Beth. Thank you.
Indeed, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us, going to Calvary and dying that we might be saved. Our next reflection is um, going to be brought to us by Rosaline. And uh, Rosaline is the um, president of our Modest Union at St. John's. And uh, kindly ask her to reflect on that reading that Julie has brought to us. Uh, Rosalind, if you can unmute yourself and bring us your reflection. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Um, oh, quite quickly, uh, I'm the leader of, of uh, Mother's Union. I'm not quite a president yet. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, this, this passage, um, it's very, it's very um, well-known story about uh, this Holy Week, Jesus being brought before Pontius Pilate. I remember my memory of reading this as a child when I was younger. Uh, my, my reactions there was that of shock, horror, of how horrible people, the, the, the Jewish crowd was to Jesus and how the hostile they were to him. And I was like, how can they do that to him? He didn't do anything wrong. But that is when you read the passage literally. literally. Um, in reading that passage now, what comes to mind for me, the reflection that I have about this passage at this time, has a lot to do with what is happening in our society around us. The question that I find coming to mind for me in this passage, Jesus being brought before the Pontius Pilate by a, a group of, uh, uh, a crowd of people. One of the things that comes to mind is injustice, cruelty and hostility of the crowd to, directed at Jesus for somebody who did not really commit any crimes at all. And then in the end, asking for Barabbas to be freed for, for, so that Jesus will be crucified. The other thing that comes to mind, because I've got such a short time to talk, I'm just gonna just do short bullet points. Passing the buck, it, it does come to mind and that is something that happens a lot in our society as well. Here it's been, Jesus is being passed back and forth. Pilate will go and talk to Jesus and he will go back and then to the crowd and then come back to Jesus. It's like going back and forth, like being passed from pillar to post. All these sufferings and, and humiliation and aggression is said to take place, in, according to the passage, to take place to fulfill what Jesus had said, as verse 32 says. This took place to fulfill what Jesus has said about the kind of death he was going to die. We know Jesus told his disciples before that uh, he was going to be arrested, beaten, and crucified. So all this uh, uh, torture for our sake is ordained by, by God. And in going through all of this, the next thing that comes to my mind is the most significant thing of all, which stands out, is how focused and obedient Jesus was throughout. He was calm, did not lose control. He knew that all that was going on was happening to fulfill what has been ordained by our Lord God, to fulfill his destiny. At the point in the passage, it says, in answer to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. Focus, he's focused on the end result of where he's going. I was born and came into this world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. He's, he didn't lose any focus at all. Jesus 
we are told we know, came to, the, to take the penalty for humanity's sin, for our sin in our place. Rather than us die and be permanently, eternally separated from God, Jesus paid for our sin to the cross. Sorry, our sin on the cross in order that we could be forever forgiven and have in eternal life. This passage shows me that no matter what we are faced with, we must not lose focus on the love God has for us. We must not lose sight of what we must do to get our desired outcome in life. We know that Jesus came as our savior to save us from God's judgment, condemnation, and payment for our sin. Jesus took the punishment for our sins for us. The question that I have for us to, to also reflect on is, what have we done with this great opportunity that we have been given? Let us take a look at what is going on in our society and in the world today. What do we see? We see a broken world. We see racism and racial inequalities. Global warming, COVID pandemic that is ravaging through the world. We see a, a domestic abuse, gender violence, modern slavery, child trafficking, murders, knife crimes, sexual abuse, greed, corruption, terrorism, wars, I can go on and on and on and on. As people, we have a great way of messing up our lives and the lives of others. You see, when you are in pain, you don't function well. You don't function to your full capacity till the pain is taken care of. It is even worse if the I think the world and our society with all the problems I have listed uh, earlier, is in a lot of pain and is not functioning well. And will not function well until we do something about it. We have the opportunity on this day of our Lord's death to bring our problems and everything that is wrong in our lives to the foot of the cross of Calvary. We bring COVID, as it continues to ravage through the world, for God to intervene. We will bring race, racism and racial inequalities, knife crimes, gender violence, domestic abuse, all the list I have made of earlier. I want everybody to add their own, whatever problems that they think they have, for us to put all these at the foot of the cross. Let all the injustices of the world, let's bring them all to the foot of the cross. And we pray for our Lord and Father that he will hear our cry for our intervention to heal the world that we live in and help us to mend our ways. Send his Holy Spirit to give us, uh, to guide us, to love one another, even as he loves us through Jesus Christ, our savior. Have a blessed and holy Good Friday, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much for that wonderful reflection. And let us pray together. Let us pray for God's ancient people, the Jews, the first to hear his word, for greater understanding between Christians and Jews for the removal of our blindness and bitterness of heart, that God will grant us grace to be faithful to his covenant and to grow in love of his name. Amen. Lord, hear us. Lord, 
graciously hear us. And our next reading um, is from Mark chapter 15, um, verses 33 to 41. And uh, John uh, Stevens from our church has kindly recorded the reading and his reflection together for us. So I'm going to share my screen, um, James, and bring the reading um, for us. Thank you. The readings, Mark chapter 15, verses 33 to 41, the death of Jesus. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joses and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, responding to that reading, I'll take our responses uh, together. We adore you, O Christ, and praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. And our next hymn is On a Hill Far Away, The Old Rugged Cross. Over to you, Bert. Let's go. 
Thank you, Bet, for that. And our next reflection um, is also from John. So James, apologies, I'm going to share the screen again and bring us John's reflection. Thank you. When we look at this, these readings, we think of three things, the time, the people, and the action. So bear in mind that at the crucifixion, um, Jesus was crucified on, at the third hour, which is approximately nine o'clock in the morning. The time of his death was at the ninth hour, which is three o'clock in the afternoon. When we think of the people, we've got the centurion, we've got Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, we've got the man with the sponge, and these people are central to what Mark is trying to tell us. You notice that there are no disciples mentioned here. It's all just ordinary people looking after each other. The centurion was a man who had uh, control over a hundred men, but in 
the terms of the Roman Empire, he was uh, of a, a very lowly um, sort of role. The two Marys had traveled extensively with Jesus around um, and through uh, the area uh, while Jesus taught and uh, performed um, miracles. And then we have the man with the sponge, the man who had compassion, who reached up and, and um, gave Jesus a drink at the last moment. You have to think about them and their actions. But, but what I see here is that they're just ordinary people. And Mark is trying to point that it's not necessarily people of rank and power who need and receive from Jesus, but also that they are um, people of lowly status. And that's what came to me with this little passage here. And then we think of the actions of the group. The, as I've already mentioned, the sponge and the compassion of the scent of the, the man who put um, uh, wine vinegar, which was a, a, a very, very basic wine for the poor. Uh, onto a sponge and um, and, fit, and put it on a pole so that Jesus could drink of it. The words of the centurion who recognised at that moment when Jesus died and of his words, he said, surely this man was the son of God. He recognised exactly what and whom Jesus was. And then at the, the moment of his death, we have the curtain of the temple torn in two. Now the curtain of the temple was the curtain that separated uh, the main part of the temple from the Holy of Holies, where only the priests could go. But by the action of it being torn in two, it's as if, Jesus is opening the way to heaven for everybody. And I think that's what we need to carry away from these, this message. That it, A, that it's for everybody, irrespective of status. That B, we act with compassion and love. And C, that we all have access to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And special thanks to John for that um, succinct um, reflection. And apologies for keeping an eye on the time. Um, I know it was meant to be one hour. We seem to be just a little bit above one hour now. Um, so James, if you can bring the, um, the last slides for our reflection. So we can say the prayers after John's reflection together. Let us pray. And let us pray for those who do not believe the gospel of Christ. For those who have not had the message of salvation. And for all who have lost faith. For the contemptuous and scornful. For those who are enemies of Christ. And persecute those who follow him for all who deny the faith of Christ crucified, that God will open their hearts to receive his word. Amen. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And Bert is gonna bring us our next hymn. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for us. Over to you, Bert. Thank you.
worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart, and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Brilliant. Thanks very much for that, Bert. And I'm just quickly going to share my screen again. Um, So let us say the prayers together after that song. Let us commend ourselves and all God's children to his unfailing love and pray for grace of holy life that with all who died in peace of Christ, we may come to the fullness of eternal life and joy of resurrection. Amen. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And then I'll hand over to Reverend Abigail to bring us our closing reflections. If you can unmute yourself, I don't check your microphone and unmute yourself. Yeah. From the Bible reading, the hints and the reflections, we will notice that the cross is central. We are mad about the ministry, the trial, the crucifixion of Christ, and how he laid aside his majesty just because of us. Now, if I show you the cross, anybody, the first thing that we speak about the cross is cruelty, sorrow, shame, pain, rejection, condemnation, and death. 
But I want us to know that the cross do speak as well. What is the cross saying? The cross is talking about victory, life, peace, forgiveness, joy, hope, healing, deliverance, sustenance. So as we speak about the cross, this cross is speaking to us. And that is main purpose why Jesus died to cancel everything that we see about the cross and put in what the cross is saying to us. In other words, if all that Jesus did means only sorrow and, and the pain and all that, if we don't enjoy what the cross is saying, then Easter is of no use at all. It has no meaning. So what I'm saying to us today is, if you are ready, accept and believe in all the sacrifices of Jesus, and you are walking his way, you made him your Lord and Savior. Congratulations. What you are asked to do now is to make him known to others. But just in case you, have, you can't remember any time when you have an encounter with this Jesus, when you say, I believe in you and I lay down my life for you as well. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. If you can't remember any time that that has happened, then maybe you are not born again. The whole idea of his death is so that you will know him. Today is another opportunity. Humble yourself, confess your sins to him, accept him, and he will give you everything that the, that the uh, cross is talking about. Before Jesus was ascended back to heaven, he appeared to his disciples and he blessed them. So also, May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the day as Jesus is still on the cross. Let's go on the journey straight through with him as we expect Easter on Sunday. Have a nice day. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. 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 So thank you everyone um, for um, attending our Good Friday service. Special thanks to um, uh, Vida, to Rosalyn and to Steve uh, and um, John for um, helping bring us our Reflections, thanks to Julie and Richard for reading, and James and Tokes at the background for helping with all the um, technology with Zooms and everything. Um, let us go in the confidence then that Christ has um, died for us. Um, he went to Calvary and then he died for you, for me, that we shall have our redemption. And let us rejoice in that redeeming love that he has for us. Have a blessed uh, Good Friday and see you on Sunday back again on Zoom and have a nice afternoon, everyone. Again, apologies for overrunning. Uh, it's very difficult to time every lines and every bit to perfection. Apologies and have a nice one. See you later on. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.